from Origin of Granite, Geological Society of America, Memoir 28, F. Fitz Osborne, Laval University, Montreal. Despite this lackadaisical attitude, geologists had good reason to be concerned about the origin of granite, even before the polonium halo evidence was published. This rock is rhyolite. It forms when granite melted in the earth pushes its way to the surface and slowly cools. Its crystals are almost microscopic and of light color. In contrast, granite has some dark minerals which contain the polonium halos, and its crystals are much larger. Geologists hoped that they were right in assuming that granite formed from slow cooling deep in the earth. But from the first, they had evidence that the assumption was wrong. This rhyolite formed by slow cooling at a depth of 1,683 feet. It exhibits only tiny crystals. It's not granite. So geologists had to assume that granites formed much deeper. In the 1960s, geologists melted small pieces of granite and let them cool slowly under conditions of heat and pressure existing very deep in the earth. This is a rock produced in those experiments. It has only tiny crystals, just like rhyolite. No large crystals, no dark crystals. It just isn't granite. The polonium halos tell us that granites were formed by creation not by natural processes. Granites contain the signature of creation. Rhyolites and rocks formed in the laboratory do not. It's just that simple. Despite these facts, in 1987, geologists still treated the origin of granite as in 1947, when it was said to be an old friend. The 1987 symposium ended with the lament. As was well documented by the discussion during this meeting, Many old questions are still debated. I would certainly hope that 100 years hence, we will not be debating the origins of granites. Professor W.S. Fife, Geology Department, University of Western Ontario, Canada. But four years later, geologists at the 1991 Second Hutton Symposium on the Origin of Granites and Related Rocks left with that hope unfulfilled, the same old questions still being debated. Geologist Dr. Andrew Snelling of the Creation Science Foundation of Australia has examined the field evidence for the origin of the granites and is considering the possibilities of their creation. The study of geology endeavors to unravel the history of the earth and the origin of the rocks that make up the surface of the earth. And so to study the origin of granites is of primary importance because it's not just some isolated question the reason is because these rocks, these granites, are found on every continent of the Earth's surface, exposed to view over areas, sometimes hundreds of square miles. For example, here in uh, Southern California, these rocks are exposed in the mountain ranges that form the backbone of uh, this area. So to deal with the question of the origin of granites is of fundamental importance if we're to understand the unfolding of Earth's history. When answering the question of the origin of granite, we can turn to the conventional scientific literature and read there that uh, most scientists propose that uh, rocks like this granite that we see here and exposed in the hills behind us originally uh, was hot molten material called magma deep below the, uh, the Earth's surface and they suppose that it cooled slowly over millions of years and they suggest that uh, millions of years of erosion of the material the, the, uh, that covered the granite has now exposed them to view for us to study today. And this is what you will read in uh, most, uh, if not all, textbooks today and what is taught as the conventional wisdom as to the origin of these rocks. To answer this question of the origin of granites and to see if the conventional wisdom is the correct explanation we need to look at the field relationships of granite, how, how granite occurs and how it occurs in relation to other rocks. And uh, here, for example, in, the, in Southern California, in the ranges where these uh, granites are exposed to view over hundreds of square miles, we see some rather odd and strange relationships that, that conventional wisdom doesn't seem to be able to explain. For example, we see, uh, as here on this rock, we can see uh, dark, uh, as it were, blocks 
um, and patches that are clearly delineated, they're sharply uh, visible uh, against uh, the, the normal granite. And uh, in other places we can see what appears to be vein-like uh, light material. And this raises the question as to whether we've had uh, perhaps even two or even three melts of different composition. It raises a question as to how conventional wisdom can explain melts like this existing side by side to produce rocks like this that seem so different from one another and yet not mix. When we go to uh, Bishop, for example, here in California, we can actually see where in a known area molten material in this case that's cooled to basalt, has interacted with a granite diorite uh, rock like uh, the granite we have here. And there, where we know for sure that there has been uh, mixing uh, and interaction, we can actually see where blobs of the granite diorite have been included in the basalt. And uh, this indicates that where we know molten material has interacted with rock, it does produce mixing. And so that really raises questions about the conventional wisdom that would, would normally explain these rocks that we see here as perhaps being uh, several melts cooling at the same time. They should have mixed, but these relationships do show that they haven't. This leads us then to ask the question, is there another possible explanation for the origin of these rocks, these granites? I believe there is another explanation. You see... When we look at these and see these relationships as we've discussed here, could these, we have to ask ourselves this question, could these rocks in fact form quickly, suddenly? After all, there's been no time for mixing. There's been probably no heat involved because otherwise the heat would have allowed the, the, the mixing to occur. That brings to my mind the possibility of what the Bible speaks of, that God created rocks at the beginning. Could these rocks be rocks that God created. The Bible says that in the beginning God created the earth. He created the land. That means he would have created the rocks. Could these rocks, these granites, have had a sudden origin created by God? It's significant in this context, therefore, that not only may we look at the field relationships, but we should also look at these rocks under the microscope, because in the microscope world, looking at these rocks, we need to be aware that there is exciting evidence that's been available for some time now of uh, particles in these rocks, uh, radioactivity that suggests quite strongly that these rocks were created by God. The telltale signature of that radioactivity appearing out of nowhere for a few moments, leaving its mark in hard granite speaks to us of an instant creation like the frozen bubbles in the glass of Alka-Seltzer. Something extraordinary happened when these rocks were formed. Something that defies all the physical laws that we presently observe. The evidence is captured in the granite. And we can see with a microscope creation's tiny mystery, polonium halos. They are a mystery only to those who are determined to stick with their theory of an Earth billions of years old. For those willing to consider the Genesis account of a recent rapid creation, the halos are perfectly understandable. They fit the biblical picture being found in the very rocks called into existence in the beginning of creation week. In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the Earth. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Polonium radio halos offer hard evidence that the Earth's foundational rocks, the granites, were created almost instantly. To Dr. Robert Gentry, those faintly colored rings are almost like the fingerprints of God, the signature of creation. <laughs> 